Hey guys and welcome to another Python tutorial here on the Coders Legacy channel. In this video we'll take a look at the Python BZ2 library. Okay, so it's also known as the BZIP2 library, okay, and that is the actual name, but we just abbreviate it to BZ2, and that's also the name with which we're gonna import it like this. Okay? All functions will basically be like bz2.open, bz2.compress, etc. Okay? So what is this library and how is it used? It's basically used for compression, okay, compression and decompression of data, okay, that's pretty simple and pretty straightforward, there isn't really much to it, okay, basically this uh, string that you see over here, this paragraph of text, we're going to be compressing and decompressing this uh, over the course of this video, and we'll be observing by how much BZ2 is actually able to compress this data, okay, and how much of an effect it really gives us. Okay, so yeah. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. All right, there are two methods in which we can actually compress data in BZ2. Okay, or actually, there are technically technically three, but uh, those are three different methods of basically doing so. But there are only two really techniques. Okay, one is through the file stream, and one is through a binary stream. Okay, that that's a bit complicated. Just let's just go ahead and begin. Okay, so uh, first, what I'm going to do is o file is equal to bc2 dot bz2 file. Okay, bc2 file is basically a kind of class in bc2. It can, it's used to open up a file stream in the bz2 format. Okay, but this basically means is that we'll be able to write and read data from this o file stream now, and it'll automatically be compressed and decompressed. Okay, if we use the o file dot write function, the data will automatically be written to it in a compressed format. If we do o file dot read, it'll automatically be read from it in a decompressed format. Okay, so it's pretty ideal for us. So what are the parameters going to be? Well, the first one is going to be the file name. Okay, so uh, let's call it compressed data. Okay, and you can go ahead and make an extension up like bz2. Okay and the file mode okay now this is going to be wb okay if you've used uh, you know file handling before in python you may have used w and r okay but we're dealing with binary data over here because we basically we need to compress this data by first converting it to a binary stream and then compressing it on a binary level okay so that's basically how the compression takes place so we're dealing with binary data so we need to be using wb Similarly, with reading, we use RB, okay? So, yeah. Now, what I'm going to do here is try and writing this data, okay? I just pass in the data over here that I want to compress, okay? And I'm going to just close the stream, okay? Now, let me try running this and see what happens. All right, exactly. This is what I expected, and just take a note of this error. It says a bytes-like object is required, not string. Okay, this is because it doesn't accept stuff like strings. Okay, it doesn't. It won't accept anything else, by the way, either. You can't pass a list into this. You can't pass a dictionary into this. Okay, so basically, what we need to do here is add a b. Okay, what this does is basically treat this data as binary. So if I do this now, it runs perfectly. Okay. The file that has been created in here. So if you go in there, actually, uh, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of weird data in there. I'm not sure why it's showing up as a WinRAR file exactly. Uh, maybe maybe because I saved it as a you know .bz2 extension. Because normally when I saved it without the bz2 extension, I was able to open up the file and actually observe. Uh, you know. Oh, you, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Okay. This has executed, and I'll go here open up this file, okay, uh, notepad, and here we go. This is just what I wanted to show you guys. This is basically what the binary data looks like if you try opening it up in a text editor, okay, it's just, uh, you won't understand any of it, obviously, because it's just, uh, it's just binary data that the computer is trying to represent in the text form, and that's obviously not, not working out. So basically, yeah. Now, what I want to do is basically try and read this data. Okay, so I'm going to go here and do I file is equal to. Okay, actually, wait. 
interesting because uh, I just realized that I can also read data from here, right? So if I just do print all file dot read, I could do the same thing. But you know what? Just to keep the two functions separate, and I'll just remove this actually. Okay, comment it out. I'll just create a new one. Okay, and over here, compressed data dot bz2 and rb and i file dot dot read. Okay. Now I just want to print this out. Okay. So let's see what happens. And then we'll close it. Okay. And here we go. Exactly as we had it saved. Okay. Here's all our text. Now what we want to do is basically check the size. Okay. Let's check the size of the regular file and uh, the one that was saved with bc2. Okay, let's see which one was more effective. Okay, you know, the file sizes basically. So uh, let me just uncomment this out and I'll call this one uncompressed and we'll open this using the regular open method in Python. Okay, and let me just comment this out here. Let me run this. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me just remove that. Okay, and Okay, now that's the reverse problem. I need to write this data uh, in string format, not binary. All right, done. So what I'm gonna do is go back over here and check out this uncompressed data file, okay? <clears throat> okay, so here's all, all the text shown normally, okay? And now what I want to do is just comment both of these out. Uh, all right, so what was the name of that again? The OS library. The OS library has this function called os.path.getSize. So where are the arguments? File name, right? So what I'm going to do is uncompressed, uh, sorry, in a string format, okay? Uncompressed data, okay? And I'm going to print this out, okay? Size of uncompressed data. Okay, and we'll do the same thing, but for the compressed one, and then we'll see which one was, was compressed more. Okay, um, okay, looks good. Now let's run this. Okay, I forgot to actually import the OS library up there. Okay, done. And there we go. The size of the uncompressed data is 752. The size of the compressed data is 451. And that's actually a very significant difference. And uh, since I've actually worked with this library in other areas as well, I can tell you that this difference goes up the more larger the data set is. And uh, like if the data set is more similar to each other, then yes, it becomes more and more compressed, okay? The compression efficiency increases. And I actually have a video on uh, you know, bc2 with pickle, the object serialization library in Python, which I highly recommend you check out. Because over there, you can actually see a practical usage of bc2. Over there, you actually get to see why we use bc2 and where it's actually practically used, okay? Because object serialization or, you know, pickle is used to take data and convert it into a binary stream, okay? So what you can do is basically use pickle to convert stuff like uh, objects, okay, dictionaries, lists, and whatever. You can convert them into binary streams and then pass that binary stream into bc2 over here, okay? And, uh, you know, that's the same way we're doing all of this. Uh, not this, actually, I meant this, okay? But basically, yeah. So that's basically how bc2 and pickle are used together, okay? And it's a, it's a very popular combination. So, yeah. And over there, I've observed Kind of compression efficiencies of like five times. So basically, if I remember correctly, I had an experiment done once where the uncompressed file was 3000 bytes and the compressed one was 550. So yeah, that's like almost six times better. Okay, so yeah, we're almost done with this video. I'm just going to show you some alternate methods now that I said I would earlier. Okay, so 
what I'm going to do here is just show you the first one. And yes, that's all there is to it. All you need to do is uh, change out bc2.bc2 file for this, basically. Okay, And uh, this basically is just uh, very similar, but uh, very similar, basically. It's the same thing. Okay, You can use it to open up a file and do the exact same thing that you would normally. It's like the bc2 library's fun version of, of the open function. Okay, so yeah. So other, other than this, basically we have the compress level parameter as well. Okay, compress level, and it ranges from one to nine. Okay, uh, basically nine is the highest setting, which is the default setting, and one is the lowest. Okay, now the thing is that there isn't actually much of a difference, which is why I haven't you know, really emphasized on this, because if I tried this now, there would be no difference. Okay, I've already tried it before, and there is no difference between one to nine on this uh, data set over here. Okay, and even on very large data sets, as I've seen in, on other examples online, there's at most a five percent difference. Okay, and maybe a second or two of a difference. Okay, because the compressed level nine is very, very marginally slower than compressed level one. So there isn't much of a difference. Okay, and I'm just telling you this just in case. Okay. And besides this, the one last thing I want to discuss actually is compressing and reading data without any file streams. Okay, what I'm going to do here is call this, make this variable called compressed is equal to bz2.compress, okay, data. And over here, I think I need to change that to binary as well. So over here, I'm going to do print bz2, sorry, compressed, uh, bz2.decompress, and then pass in compressed as the parameter, like this, okay? So this is basically a way of compressing and decompressing without having to resort to file streams. Usually we, de we deal with file streams, okay? But if by chance you don't want to do it, or maybe you want to write it to a file later on in your program, then you can use this method, okay? So run this, and we should see the same thing. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Honestly, I think we're pretty much done here. And be sure to check out that video of mine in the description below, where we actually use the Python BZ2 library and the Python object serialization library Pickle. Okay, because it does show a very good example of how object serialization works and how BZ2 is used to compress that data. Because if you notice, the BZ2 cannot uh, compress data like uh, strings, uh, I mean, in their native format, and it cannot, it can compress anything basically, unless it's a byte string. So the amazing thing about Pickle is, and BZ2, their combination, is that Pickle can like convert anything to a byte stream, any object, and then BZ2 can just compress that byte stream. So it's like a win-win. Pickle basically enables BZ2 to, uh, you know, to compress anything. So yeah, be sure to check it out. And that's pretty much it for this video. I'll see you guys in hopefully some other video. Later.